Hello, boys. <laughs> Technology One Legion Nil. Welcome, everybody, to the second video of a series about the real world historical elements in Fallout New Vegas Caesar's Legion. In the first video, we checked out the similarities between Caesar's Legion and the Roman Empire. In this one, we will continue by finding whether Caesar's Legion follows faithfully the Roman Empire's historical examples or diverts to a different path. Before we move on, please click like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. Okay, let's go. So, in our last conversation, Caesar mentioned that he based uh, his legion on three characteristics of the Roman Empire. These characteristics were the fact that it was a highly militarized autocracy, that it effectively integrated the cultures it conquered, and uh, that it also dedicated its citizens to something higher, the idea of Rome itself. And it turns out that he was right. Rome did have these three characteristics, and they were instrumental in its success. But uh, he also mentioned uh, that these characteristics will produce a... Uh, what did you say again, Caesar? A society that could prevent mankind from fracturing and destroying itself in this new world by establishing a new Pax Romana. Thank you. But uh, what is Pax Romana according to Caesar? Uh, well, since I'm here, I can ask him. Hey, Caesar, I'm back. Uh, society that uh, will prevent mankind from fracturing sounds very nice, but what does Pax Romana mean? It means a nationalist, imperialist, totalitarian, homogenous culture that obliterates the identity of every group it conquers. Long-term stability at all costs. The individual has no value beyond his utility to the state, whether as an instrument of war or production. Well, uh, the original Pax Romana was the 200 years of prosperity and stability between the beginning of Augustus' reign in 27 BCE to the death of Marcus Aurelius in 180 CE. But uh, was this peace and prosperity produced by a nationalist, imperialist, totalitarian, homogenous culture that obliterates the identity of every group it conquers? I mean, to be fair, the imperialist part is not something that one can argue with. But uh, describing the Roman Empire as nationalist uh, is pushing it a bit. Trying to equate uh, what could be considered as national identity during antiquity with what we understand today as national identity is not such a good idea. And when we get to the totalitarian part, things start to get off the rails. The Roman Empire was autocratic and oppressive in many ways, but for a government to be totalitarian, it needs to force every single aspect of an individual's life to revolve around serving the state. That is something that didn't exist in antiquity, and I can't think of a single civilization of the ancient world that falls into that definition. Also, the claims about a homogeneous culture that obliterates the identity of every group it conquers is demonstrably wrong. Even after most of the empire's populations had been successfully Romanized, there were significant differences between them. A Romanized Egyptian was very different from a Romanized Britain, and even the process of their Romanization was also different. The various Roman provinces continued to at least partially observe their customs and laws, speak their language together with Latin or Greek, and worship their ancestor gods. As long as they paid their taxes, incorporated the imperial cult into their pantheon, and didn't revolt, Rome was uh, more or less cool with them. Most of the time, uh, people chose to become Romans, not uh, through violence or coercion, but because it improved their quality of life and offered them more opportunities for personal advancement inside the empire's social structure. And the Romans weren't just tolerant of other cultures, they were also accepting of external influence on their culture. I mean, people still consider Rome to be a direct copycat of Greece, although this is inaccurate and, to be honest, a bit unfair. And there are also a lot of cultural elements they imported from Egypt and Asia Minor. As for the individual that has no value beyond his utility to the state, whether as an instrument of war or production, 
This has very little to do with uh, what the subject of the Roman Empire was. Roman citizens had very clear rights under Roman law, and non-citizen freemen had the right to become Roman citizens, usually by completing their military service. In fact, Roman citizenship was one of the most powerful tools of Romanization. So basically here Caesar's concept of the Roman Empire and Pax Romana is getting way off the historical path. In fact, uh, his version looks a bit like a much more extreme version of uh, some other guy's modern interpretation of the Roman Empire. I can't seem to remember his name. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. Let's move on. And this is not the only point where Caesar seems to ignore the examples of the historical Roman Empire. Just looking around the legion's camps, you start to notice that despite their impressive setup, organization and numbers, they lack any signs of high-tech weapons and equipment. Unlike their opponents, the New California Republic, the legion has no power suits, no vertibirds, no computers, no science labs, no robots, no high technology equipment of any kind. The same goes for the weapons, armor and general equipment of the legion soldiers. The main focus, especially with the equipment of the lower rank troops, is on melee weapons and unarmed combat. Machetes and spears are the most common weapons of Caesar's legionnaires. Even his elite Praetorian guards are armed with only a ballistic fist. Okay, this is a Praetorian with a ballistic fist. These have to do... You'll pay for that. Uh, I, I, no, I didn't mean to do that. I did not mean to do that. Caesar mentions the reasoning behind all this while talking about why he's not willing to utilize Mr. House technology for his own purposes. Caesar, I don't think this Luddite approach is working that well. You should use Mr. House technology to attack the dam. You don't get it, do you? The weapons I wield are forged from blood, flesh, sinew, bone, mortal stuff, fragile even. And yet my legion obeys me even unto death. Why? because they live to serve the greater good and they know of no alternatives. House's machines, his technologies, what do they propose? The possibility of victory without sacrifice, no blood spilled, just rivets. That's not an idea to be put in circulation. If mankind's going to survive this moment in history, it needs warriors, not gadgets. Well, actually, while going through the game in a bit more depth, you can discover that Caesar occasionally forgets this particular rule. A very negative reputation with Caesar will result to assassination squads of elite legionnaires attacking the player in specific locations on the map. Hello, boys! <laughs> Technology 1, Legion nil. These assassin legionnaires will have some pretty advanced weaponry on them, showing that they have no problem using advanced technology if it can serve their purposes. But uh, was this Rome's attitude towards technology? Well, obviously not. The Romans quickly adopted the innovations of other cultures, even those they considered barbarians, and made some very substantial innovations themselves. They had chainmail, the ballista, the handheld crossbow, and Greek fire, and did not restrict themselves only to advancing military technology. Concrete, heated floors, water mills, aqueducts, stone bridges, roads are just some of the things that were significantly improved or outright invented by the Romans. Some cultural reasons prevented them from evolving into an industrial society, but otherwise they embraced innovation and the advantages it provided them at every step. If they had the opportunity to use any advanced modern technology, they definitely would. The idea that the Romans would ignore any technological advantage in warfare or any other part of life for the sake of the greater good to avoid becoming weakened or to avoid being reliant on supply lines is just ridiculous. But it's not only advanced technology that is considered something to be avoided because it can supposedly weaken the legion's troops. They avoid using advanced medicine even more than advanced technology. Especially drugs will definitely get you in trouble with Caesar's legion. Uh, Howdy, partner. Uh, 
Is it dangerous to trade with the Legion? Not at all. They're my best customers. As long as you don't try to sell them chems or alcohol, they treat you fair. Hell, I don't even need to travel with guards most of the time in Legion territory. All the bandits are dead or run off. Unlike uh, the New California Republic, which has advanced healing medicine and equipment like steam packs, various types of chems, surgical instruments, and filled hospitals with doctors, the Legion has only primitive healing substances like healing powder and bitter drink. The only one who has direct access to advanced medicine is Caesar himself, and he is the only one that can bestow this gift to others. So, uh, what's that machine in your tent, hypocrite? It's called an auto doc. As the name suggests, it's an automated physician, more or less. He can treat broken bones, cuts, punctures, scrapes. Sometimes I bestow its use upon someone I favor. Makes for a powerful gift in a culture that forbids painkillers and is largely ignorant of medical science. Of course, uh, the Roman Empire didn't have this attitude towards medicine. The Romans used extensively what today we would recognize as field medicine and field medics that could even perform surgery during battle. They had rudimentary hospitals, advanced surgical instruments, and could even perform some basic plastic surgery. As for drugs, they use things like powdered opium for anesthesia, and cannabis and hallucinogens were used recreationally and in religious ceremonies all over the Roman world. Well, it seems that if you go beyond some basic characteristics and principles, Caesar's legion similarities with the real Roman Empire are rather superficial. In reality, they are quite different. And uh, there are some very clear reasons for this. Some have to do with the realities of Fallout's post-nuclear world and Caesar's personality. And some might be related more to the history and design of uh, the game itself. But uh, we will discover all this in the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned some things. Please like this video, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in watching more videos on the subject. You can also check out the previous video in the series and my archaeological reconstructions in VR project. I put the links on the screen. And for now, Ave Atque Valle.